absolutely beautiful Gemini friends. Welcome to your horoscope for April of 2022. We're Gemini this month. It's quite busy actually. We've got the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction coming together. Pluto stepping into retrograde. Mercury, your ruling planet, is coming home into your home sign. And we have also got a solar eclipse. So lots going on in the energy of April and there's also a lot going on in the astro communities and I hope you will be joining me. We've got good stuff going on at OPA. There's things happening at ESAR. Lots of chances to practice and study astrology as well as to build your astrological practices if that's something that you're looking for. And of course, there's all of the goodness that's going on around this channel as well. So I hope to see you doing some astrology together somewhere in this next month, Gemini. Let's jump in here and talk about what's going on in those cosmos, okay? Right at the beginning of the month on the first, Gemini, we're coming in with a new moon at 11 degrees of Aries. This is going to light up your 11th house space. So I want you to think friends, social groupings, social media, long range plans, goals, designs, all of that, you have the opportunity to plant your seeds of intention to initiate Aries, begin something new here. Where do you need to step you out to make and affect change in these areas for yourself, right? There's a little bit of fire under your airy little legs to help you do that. So plant your seeds of intention to either begin something new or give something a fresh burst of energy in this particular area. I'll talk more about that moon in the um, new moon video for the month. So check that out at the end of this video, all right? Now, as we get to the fifth, we see that the 10th house is definitely going to be busy this month as well as your 12th house. So as we get to the fifth, we see Venus move into the energy of Pisces where we've already got Neptune and Jupiter hanging out in that particular energy, okay? Venus moving into the energy of Pisces now lighting up the 10th house, tip top of your chart, Gemini. One of the things I want to point out to you is that Venus coming up there makes this area magnetic. So around work, your reputation, your title, all of these kinds of things, there's, there's a magnetic energy that comes to this. So you could definitely see some changes in station in some way, shape, or form. Do you get a promotion? Do you go from being married to single, single to marry, you know, just a regular human to being a volunteer? Where, what changes in your title or your status? But the other thing that I think of with Venus moving into your 10th house area is that this is an opportunity for you to magnetize financially and magnetize relationships into your life that help you around your career but they're not always going to be these like hard go get them kind of relationships they may be a bit more quiet a bit more intuitive they feel like they are embracing your spirit a bit more to help you get the work done that you need to get done it's actually a lovely energy so i look forward to seeing what happens and manifests for you in this particular area now, on the 10th, we see Mercury move into the energy of Taurus. 12th house space for you. This is quiet. You're starting to get your rest, rejuvenation sector of your energies lit up before you move into birthday time in just a month from now, okay? So Mercury in the 12th house. First of all, if you are working on things that you need to do behind the scenes, you're doing research in some way, you're dipping into your spiritual practice, you're writing a book, whatever is happening, and it needs to be done in a little bit of quiet or maybe some self-isolation or something like that this is a wonderful energy mercury will be very very helpful for you here now also mercury doesn't get to just whip and zip and flip like it does any other time in the energy of Taurus it very much so gets contained and focused so whatever you are working on in this 12th house mercury will really focus and it almost becomes stubborn about what it's working on in this particular energy one of the things you can consider is that Taurus is an energy of the body and of the senses. It's an earth energy. So it works on things in a material plane. So if you needed to have a comeback to your own body, Gemini, this may be a wonderful time to use Mercury to have a head-body connection, right? Head, heart, body body connection. Make sure the chakras are lit up and in alignment. That's really a good a good use of this energy, okay? 
On the 12th, we're going to have the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction here at the tip top of your chart in that 10th house. Now this is a big deal. It's a big energy coming together. It's also an incredibly boundless energy. Neither Jupiter nor Neptune know anything about boundaries, nor do they care. Okay, so what we've got here as these two come together is I want you to think about your career and close your eyes as I'm speaking to you right now. What do you want in your career? What do you want in your title? What do you want in your reputation? As you're moving around in the world, as you leave legacy from this planet, what do you want to leave for people to know you as? What are the experiences that you would like to have, even if they seem really out there? Before a chair was a chair, it was just a thought. It was just a vision. Now we got damn chairs everywhere, right? This is you in terms of this area of your life right now. What do you want to experience because anything is possible in that career of yours? Anything is possible in that 10th house. Now, I love that for you and for us. And there's a big, generous, go get it, idealistic energy attached to this. But there is also a huge lack of practicality. So Gemini, what you're thinking, wanting, visioning, it may be the best but you may also get a reality check that asks you do you have the resources to make that happen which is not a no it is not a no if the answer is no i don't have all of this money to live as a billionaire or whatever it is that you think you want to do it may be a, oh i don't have it yet this is your cue to dig into that vision that you have for yourself and your life in this experience and get ready to go find the practical resources to help you make that thing happen. It, it may not be a, it is not a no. It's a not yet if you don't have your resources and stuff in place. So bring some practical resources to your beautiful vision, okay? As we get to the 14th, now we're going to see Mars roll into this Piscean era. So you're really ready to go. You're like, make the vision, make the vision. Mars here in Pisces will actually be helpful to help you see if the vision that you have for yourself is actually useful to other people as well right whenever you're in business whenever you're doing whatever it is that you're doing you're not selling your business you're focusing on the problem that your vis business solves right so this could be said in your life and in your relationships and your reputation as well you're not focusing so much on the relationship the job but how you are solving the challenges or the problems around that. How are you helping other people, Gemini, be in this world, solve their challenges and promises? Think of what you can do for others. And this is a more comfortable use of Mars in Pisces because Mars wants to be decisive and Pisces is like, nah, I don't know, maybe kind of vague, right? So you need to make the best use of what Mars has got to offer as this kind of spiritual other centered service warrior or service gardener in this energy. As we get to the 16th, we are going to have a full moon at 26 degrees of Libra. This will light up your fifth house space. So the full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. We need to create a shift and change in energy, but it's under a lot of light. So you are pretty able to see what it is. In the fifth house, we're talking about joy, pleasure, expression taking a risk in some way. In the fifth house, we can be talking about your children, conceptions, adoptions, stepchildren, all of that can fall in here. But more and more, I also find that what are what's happening in your fifth house for you, Gemini, around you as a child to your parents? What's going on here that maybe needs a shift or an adjustment, right? So whatever it is that you find in this area, I want you to be looking at under Libra energy, where has the balance of needs and the balance of energy maybe come out of alignment? Are you doing more for them than you are for yourself? Because remember, Aries, the sun is in Aries back in the 11th house energy, right? Which is like, I need to be out here. I need to be being known for something. I need to be producing something instead of just being on this side, being all about what makes other people happen. So there may be a rebalancing of your scales, Libra, to make sure that the me and the we sections of your life are in balance here. Of course, there'll be um, a full moon video as well. And you can see that at the end of this video as well. 
On the 19th, the sun moves into Taurus. This is officially it. You're grounding in with the sun in that 12th house to get ready for birthday time. So rest, take care of yourself, take care of your body, get that massage if you can do it, do that self massage if you can, right? Allow yourself, Gemini, the time if you need to while the sun is here to slow down and reflect on what you would like going forward. Go to that retreat. You know, do whatever it is that allows for some of this more 12th house behind the scenes energy to get some work. And if that is research, if you are working on something, if you're speaking, creating, creating your products behind the scene, whatever it is, take that time to know that the sun's got you with light, heat, life, and motivation back there. On the 29th, busy day. First of all, we're going to see Pluto step into its retrograde at 28 degrees of Capricorn. Gemini, this will light up your eighth house space. Not new. This is not new. You've been looking at this for years and working on it. So at this particular point in this Plutonian retrograde and pass, what you're going to be working over are these last vestiges of control. Where are you power struggling in your eighth house? Joint resources, becoming independent, therapy, trauma, astrology, uh, intimacy, you see into me, reproductive system in the body. These are the things that light up. Death, taxes, insurance, inheritance, all of that lights up. This is not a new area in how you are creating joint connection. But during the retrograde, focus on where transformation is available because you're still power struggling in some way here. And if you surrender, you may actually win. Right? Where do you have destructive actions, ideas, and behaviors that are keeping you from being as lush and successful in this area? That's what this Pluto retrograde really gives us an opportunity to go back into, you know, and, and see where we have a chance to kind of butterfly and transform a little bit. Now, Pluto's been in pre retrograde shadow since January retrograde here in April. We'll see it direct in October and it will finish that post retrograde shadow time in January. Also on the 29th, we've got Mercury coming home into the energy of Gemini. So you may be like, I'm in full power, friends. So the networking, taking yourself out, but ultimately thinking about you, Gemini. Who do you want to be next? Where are you going next? How would you like to put yourself out there? You know, as you're getting, because this is the decision-making energy. As that sun is getting ready to roll back into your sign for your annual year, what decisions do you need to make for Gemini to be the best version of Gemini as we go forward in 2022? How do you want to dress? Um, what do you want to study? What do you need to learn? You know, where do you need to stimulate yourself, Gemini? Where is there some, like... You know, maybe you've got a lot of behind the scenes 12th house energy going on, but where do you need to get into the details and the patterns that you've had going on for this last year and look at what you've done well? Where did you succeed? You just killed it. And where is there room to grow? There's space on both sides of those scales. Mercury here can help you do that. You could also just find that you're very busy. You've got a lot of thinking, a lot of conversation, a lot of breathing to be done, okay? Now, as we close out this month on the 30th, we are going to have a solar eclipse happening at 10 degrees of Taurus. This too is not necessarily new energy. We started to see the rumblings of what was going on in your 12th house in November of 2021. So flashback, when you think about your security, your possessions, your relationships, um, how you felt about yourself, your self-worth, what started to come around in November that's kind of been blossoming. And now at the solar eclipse, which is still our new moon for the month, you're planting your seeds of intention to over this next six months, really let this area blossom. You know, question yourself, where have I gotten too comfortable in some of my actions, attitudes, and behaviors? And I'm starting to see that they don't actually serve me very well right and i'm ready to bring a different creative side of me out i can make money in a different way right where are you seeing value show up in your life in a different way that's what this solar eclipse is going to help you 
take a look at. Now you're also going to sprinkle this in throughout the rest of the year with the eclipses that happen in the Scorpio energies as well, right? Which are going to show you where things have to shift in your daily routine for you to be successful. But right now today on the 30th, I want you to go back and think about the inklings that have already been coming up. How are you loving on yourself? How are you loving and then promoting that love of yourself out in the world, Gemini? Because what you're putting out is definitely looking to come back, okay? All right, my absolutely beautiful Gemini friends, April is a busy energetic month. Hydrate, rest, and get ready to participate in all of the energetic happenings that are coming your way. Please keep me posted on how things are manifesting in the comment section down below. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. Don't forget to check out your moon videos, which I will link just at the end of this video. They're up here somewhere. And I will see you guys next time. Bye, friends.